Hi, my name is Pat Warner, Time 4 Nutrition Coach and Athlete. I'm here at Heavy Hitters Camp in Manchester with the main man himself, Haroon Headley, who's the coach of Amin Jahanzeb. Now, basically, we're just going to go through a few things, just a little bit of info about Haroon, his background, and where we are today and how, what has brought us to this day today. Hi, Haroon, how are you? I'm good, Pat. Thank good, you, man. Good, 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 good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, I um, started boxing when I was 11 years old, um, under force. You know, my mum, you know, a <laughs> West Indian woman, you know, she had six boys of us on yeah, the estate yeah. and we had to go to the boxing gym, you know what I mean? So, you know, I used to like athletics, right. I used to like running and uh, <laughs> she said you could run for the bus. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, That's no lie. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I started in the boxing gym. Yeah. Um, I hated it. Yeah. You know, first, Did you? Yeah, I hated it. Right. I got my ass handed to me. Every session. Nobody likes getting hit, right? <laughs> no, man, bloody nose, everything. And my mum used to send me back and say, what was his nose like? You know, like she was getting a kick out yeah, of it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I remember um, it was the six weeks holidays and the coach at the time, Phil Martin, you know, which is a Moss side. Oh, 100%. Um, God rest his soul. He said, don't, don't go missing. Stay in the gym for six yeah. weeks while everyone's on the holiday. So he used to be this boy and he used to, he used to give, me, give me tough work, you know what yeah. I mean? And he boxed for England at the yeah. time, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I stayed in the gym. Yeah. And I was hungry, I was training, thinking for him. And he come back, I remember he come back, it was like second week of September, he was back at school, mm. man, and I dealt with him. <laughs> and then that was it, yeah. I was hooked. Yeah. Um, you know, I boxed quite a few times as an amateur. Um, went to LA, um, spent time in Ken Norton's gym in 1994. Wow. Uh, trained over there. Uh, came back, um, was, uh, I used to do bits and pieces with Billy Graham's training yeah. when he first turned Hatton over and yeah. then. Uh, I just lost my way. Yeah. I lost my way. The the streets grabbed hold of me. And um, that was me and boxing done as a competitor. And how so, long was that for then? So that was when I was, my last competitive bout was when I was 20. Okay. Um, so then I spent like two years in a void, um, MMA, you know, traveling around different things, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, just crafting me yeah. as a fighter. Um, and then I started um, helping a friend out with some amateurs. Okay. Uh, boxing, I started enjoying it again. So with these kids, in the first season, they had five national finalists, you know, with these youngsters, and uh, ended up with the seniors. One thing led to another, I've, you know, I, I ended up in pro boxing. Uh, I wanted to understand pro boxing, so the first year, you know, I just got a friend of mine, he was average guy, so on the circuit, I used to travel up and down the country mm. with him, but in that, I was learning the ropes of uh, different managers, yeah. different small or promotions, how it goes on behind the scenes with somebody who's not being looked after, mm. who they don't care yeah. about. And I learned the harsh lessons of boxing early. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, then I was fortunate enough to work with some, um, some great champions coming through, some youngsters at the time. Um, one of my best fighters to date, uh, we won the British title together in Leeds, um, you know, about four years ago. You know, he's moved on to better things, this kid, and he's mm. uh, actually going to fight for the world title soon. Wow. Um, so, Got to know, start somewhere, though, haven't they? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. so we, you know, we went through that. Um, uh, I launched Heavy Hitters Gym 2016. Okay. Um, in that, there have been many fights from international world title, mm. world title camps, um, British title fights, area title fights, mm. you know what I mean? And um, then, uh, I mean, Janza walked through the door. Mm. You know, we'd spoke a bit on the social media. Yeah. And he come down, he come and met me with his brother. Um, we had a chat, yeah. you know, uh, we had a good chat, honest conversation. And um, he then started coming to the gym. And, you mm. know, um, at the time in the gym, I had like seven lads, Yeah. you know, and then he walks in and then, you know, we're training. So yeah, I was, yeah. was, was climbing and, you know, fighters move on. Yeah. You know, this is boxing. Yeah. And uh, he stayed, um, you know, and uh, we've, we've crafted on from there. Um, now he's in a great position. Good. He's got a great management with uh, Tunde yeah. Ajay, uh, Stamina for Sale. Mm. He's done amazing things with yeah. uh, Anthony Yard. Yeah. You know, he's took a, a amateur novice to yeah. become a very good pro yeah. and challenge for world title and earn proper money. Um, well, so just cutting you off there, what I like about you yourself, Arun himself, is, is his humility. I mean, I'm from a bodybuilding background, and when I decided to work with Amin and work with you, the first thing I noticed about you is that your knowledge and your humility. A lot of bodybuilders who are the greatest bodybuilders of all time, whether it's by popularity or what they've done on stage, they used to hone the craft by going away and learning. Mm. First thing I noticed about you when I spoke to you is that you just jump on a plane, right? And just, oh and just travel and 
learn from the best coaches in the world, even if they didn't know you was there. To do that and take time off your own back, people don't understand behind the scenes, is, is incredible yeah. for somebody that wants to learn his craft but wants to do it his way, which means you're your own man. And for me, that's fairly special because bodybuilding is a very individual sport and you can learn off all these other people, but to learn to get to where you are, you have to be your own man. And that's what I've noticed. It made it easier for me to want to work with Amin. I think as much as it was I, through connections through the family and stuff, when I actually met you, you sealed the deal for me yeah. for yeah. being here because yeah. of what you were, because you remind me of so much of myself. You never take credit. You always, like, you've just been on about me and, and other people and this guy that's gone on, on to fight for the world title. You've not even mentioned me. You've not even, be, you've not, and that to me shows humility. And I think in terms of boxing, I think probably now I've watched boxing for the best part of 45 years. I think your star and your stock is going to rise every day because of the person you are. Yeah, and it's a credit to work with you. Obviously, we're going to speak with Amin further down the line. But in terms of how you run your camp and what's the most important thing that a boxer needs to bring to you as a coach? Commitment. It's got, they've got to be committed. You know, talent with no commitment is, is nothing. 100%. You know, and then you can have no talent with all the commitment. You know, and they'll go far. Yeah. You know, so that's the first one because you know, you know, my motivation is their dedication. Yes. You know, and and if I say we're in the gym this day and then they don't turn up, they got that excuse. I know that I can't work with that person yeah, no more yeah. because it's I call it the excuse mm -hmm. tin. And there's been many fighters that I've let go because yeah. of this excuse mm -hmm. tin. And it's a mental note. Once it's full, I'm gonna hand it to yeah. them and say, "There's your yeah, tin. Yeah. See you later." Yeah. Because I've got. You know, this is a, it's a, a sport full of sacrifice. It is. Full of heartache. It is. And what you've got to put in to get something yeah. out is a very small percentage who yeah. go and conquer things. It's right. A very small percentage of lads yeah. who go and do it. Yeah. You know, so you have to have that same drive all the way through. It's like I say to I mean, it's like every fight is a world title fight. 100%. Everybody we're taking you so seriously yeah. because we want to be the best and want yeah. to climb there. Mm. and. I think it's if you can get a fighter who can mirror that of the trainer, yeah. it's a force. Mm. And then obviously now with yourself on board, yeah, yeah. it's created an energy force that this is going to travel at some pace that if you're in the way, you're just going to get blown aside. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the beautiful thing about this, this connection now. Well, the, the, the biggest compliment I can, I can pay to you, and obviously I've not said this to you, I'm saying it to you now live on camera, is... There's a lot of great coaches in the world, as you know yourself, you know, the hunters of the world, you know what I mean? The Emmanuel Shul, God rest his soul. Freddie Roach, phenomenal coach. But with the fight that you've got and the coaches that I've named, I don't think that his stock would rise with any other coach other than you. Uh, you know, you know what, what I mean? Lot, yeah, other me. than you. I mean, I've, I've seen the difference in him. I know why he's the way he is, because obviously I train him now as well. And you remind me so much of myself. I mean, I'm stealing the line from somebody else. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody has an alarm clock to wake up with. I can tell me and you don't need an alarm clock. Our passion wakes us up. Oh, yeah. In what we do, it's the passion that wakes us up. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I think with the team that we've got, you know what I mean? We don't need to say what's going to happen. You know, people just turn up and they'll see what happens. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And like I say, I mean, stock's rising, but so is yours. I don't think this works without you. Do you know what I mean? I think you're, a, you're, I think you're going to be one of the best coaches in the world if you're not already there now. And if people don't hear about you, they certainly will after this next fight. You know, you know, it's the, it's the thing you say that is like, you know, I mean, he's, he wants to be a world champion, yeah. wants to be the best. Yeah. And me as a coach, you know, you know, I look at him and think, I want to be that old 80 odd year old coach yes. who's had numerous world yeah. titles and it will in happen. there. You know, to go all the way through, you know, you yeah. name the people like the Freddie Roaches. Yeah, yeah. Like that. You know, he started with was Eddie Futch. Yeah. He was the assistant. Yeah. And he learned his, he learned yeah, his yeah. trade. His it's like craft, a boat room, isn't it? Come through, yeah. Yeah, it's like you a know, boat room. And everyone has that door opener. Yeah. But I feel that you have to go through the heartbreak and the setbacks early yeah. to, to, to kind of put more iron clad on yeah. yourself to move yeah. forward, you know what I yeah. mean? And I think I've I've been to a certain point so many times in yeah. boxing. Yeah. And it's like a snakes and ladders board. You roll the wrong oh, hand 100%. and you straight back down that ladder or yeah. you're down that snake. Yeah. And now it's like, it's the climb, but it's, it's a climb knowing where the small ladders yeah. are to climb rather yeah. than try and jump on a big ladder. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? The 100%. step by step, small baby steps, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we'll get there in the end. Well, you've got to understand about ladders. You know, if you have big ladders, there's that much of a gap between a big ladder 
There's only that one, but it's a small ladder. So you keep using that small ladder, you'll get to the top. Some of them big ladders, you can't even reach the next stage. Yeah. You know, and people really realize that. I think one thing that we both have in common before we wrap up this interview is we truly believe in the same things. And like we always said, every day is a school day. You know what I mean? Every day is a school day because we never stop learning. And I think that's why everybody in, in your camp, because it is your camp, because you're the main man, and heavy hitters, I know your boxer goes in and, and has the wars, but it doesn't happen without you. But obviously, we're going to speak to Amin in, the, in a minute. You know, it's going to be a great, great journey, and I look yeah, forward exactly. to sharing it with you. Perfect. Thanks for the interview, Thank you. and we'll see you soon. Perfect.